Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call uh, the Ordinance Committee uh, into session. Uh, tonight we have um, two items on the agenda, 2023-118, the Ordinance Zoning Amending Chapter 375, uh, Zoning Section 8.0 for Special District, adding Section 8.6, MBTA Community Multifamily Overlay District for compliance with Mass General Law 48, Section 3A, Multi. <laughs> Families only requiring for MBTA communities and 2023-119 order for the land disposition agreement over at the former Ross lot. Before I begin, I'd like to read the open meeting law. <coughs> Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting to any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, Jen, could you call uh, the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Present. Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor Devine. Present. Councilor Devona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Councilor Leanne. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor Fairman. Chairman McCarthy. Present. Six members, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, I think um, we were downstairs earlier for a, uh, a very productive planning uh, board meeting, and I, I think, Mr. Timmons, um, if I um, don't have this wrong, you'll be leading off again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, members of the uh, council. Um, <clears throat> what uh, our presentation tonight will be that I'm going to give you a bit of an overview. This body's a little more familiar with what's going on than the planning board had been because they were presented with a lot of the work that occurred over the summer. Um, but you may recall that we were in front of you last May after our action plan that had been approved by DHCD. Um, we gave you an overview of what was to happen. And um, you may recall the, or I recall certainly, the sage comments of my ward counselor, um, Councillor Kane, who thought that there was a disconnect between the fact that we're, we're looking to create residential housing because of an MBTA that's not really terribly functional and that it's a little unfair to the community, um, or the communities, plural, that are serviced by the MBTA uh, to have this housing um, measure uh, thrust upon them when they don't have a functional MBTA to back it up. So with that criticism in mind, which I, I think is a very valid one, I'll just um, remind the body that um, this is an amendment to Chapter 40A, the Zoning Act, which is a statute. And, you know, we're complying with Section 3A um, in enacting an ordinance, um, Section 8.6, which is before you and will be before you for approval next week. Um, by way of a bit of background, in 2016 in North Quincy, uh, we passed a transit-oriented district, section 8.5 of our zoning ordinance, to allow for the project that now exists down there over the North Quincy T. Um, that ordinance was the precursor to what's before you tonight. Um, but the issue with our section 8.5, and I'm reading directly from it, is that the purpose section of 8.5 states that the purpose that Quincy had in enacting Section 8.5 was to provide a greater opportunity for the construction of quality developments and secondarily to encourage mixed-use development in the area um, that we had designated as the TOD district. The issue with Section 3A is it's got a very different purpose and a far more limited one. Section 3A provides that the purpose of the MBTA community's multifamily overlay district is to allow multifamily housing as of right. So the focus is on housing opportunity and as of right, which means that um, the ability to, to limit what goes in in this new district is very, very restricted. The point of that is on the, on the statewide level, um, there had, uh, there's long been frustration with the fact that 
there's such a great demand in our region for housing, and yet a lot of communities are freezing out housing opportunities. Um, when Governor Baker was in Quincy shortly, in a, shortly after enacting uh, Section 3A, which was, was enacted in 2021, Governor Baker was talking about a community in the South Shore that has two commuter rail stations in it and 30,000 square foot zoning requirements for new housing. Um, he found that to be very frustrating because it was a, a, a great disincentive to creating housing opportunities, yet they had this commuter rail uh, that could easily accommodate um, the type of new housing that 3A is designed to, to kind of create. So with that in mind, the state moved forward trying to change how things work in our region. Um, you probably read in the paper the other night that the town of Milton um, finally passed their transit, well, uh, MBTA overlay district. Um, we are looking to do what is mandated under Section 3A. And just to be clear, we talked about this before, we're creating an overlay district. And what that means is this is not a mandate to build housing. Uh, it's not a mandate to the city to, cre to uh, develop the infrastructure that would allow for housing. What it is is essentially an ordinance that eliminates restrictions to multifamily housing in order to provide for opportunities in areas where people, developers, um, folks who are current owners of real estate may wish to create real estate that is housing focused. So with that in mind, I have uh, worked almost exclusively following uh, what uh, I, I still refer to it as DHCD. It's recently been renamed, but there's a MBTA communities sample ordinance. And the ordinance that we've drafted here, which would go into our zoning code as section 8.6, is uh, it's totally follows what the state has recommended. And the reason we're doing that, there was a misconception back in the spring that we were already, we were covered under this new section 3A because we had a TOD district, what we had done down in North Quincy. But the problem with that district, as I read earlier, our section 8.5 says that the purpose was to create mixed use opportunities. If you read section 8.6, it's targeted, it's very specific, and it's about real estate um, that is multifamily housing. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, I was gonna have Mr. Stevens go through the PowerPoint, uh, but I just wanted to remind the body um, what, what we're dealing with here and that this is really kind of the conclusion of a process that went on uh, beginning last May. We had a uh, council vote and an order where uh, it, it was introduced on May 30th that um, we were to revise our ordinance consistent with Section 3A. That has happened, that's what's before you. And um, Mr. Stevens will explain the work that the planning department did in identifying a district, um, then modifying that one district at Quincy Adams and incorporating something down in North Quincy, um, which we think is uh, gonna be a, a, a smooth transition. And again, this came up at the end of the hearing and the, before the planning department, uh, planning board rather. Um, it's, I can't emphasize enough, this is simply creating an overlay district that allows for development if private property owners, private developers wish to do it. It's the intent of this zoning ordinance is to incentivize the development of multifamily housing when development occurs in Quincy. So with that, I'll have Mr. Stevens go over uh, the presentation, which is pretty brief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, 
thank you, Solicitor Timmons. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, City Councilors. Um, so uh, Jim had a great introduction on the law and some of the pre-work uh, that uh, his office has, has done. Uh, we've been looking at this uh, since the beginning too, and uh, at, at one point, and, and I'd want to you know uh, relay this to all the counselors, uh, is the department's belief that a lot of what we do in Quincy Center in our existing multifamily zones, Res B, Res C, the, the business districts, that's already getting to the unit density that the state is looking for here. Uh, the, the struggle is a lot of that is tr we trigger special permits or a variance uh, are required and the state's uh, uh, is mandating by right development. So by right um, means there's no discretionary approvals, which is yes or no's. Uh, we still hold the ability uh, and the planning board will have that ability to perform site plan reviews on projects. So that'll review all the technical documents. Uh, we'll still uh, deploy our independent peer review processes. So this isn't Wild West by right development. Um, but uh, if I could just take a few steps back uh, a little bit of how we developed our approach to this uh, is the uh, MBTA legislation classifies different communities as different types. Uh, Quincy with our subway stations, we're a rapid transit community. So as it goes to the timeline, uh, we have a December 31st uh, deadline to comply with this district. Um, and, it, and we have higher density requirements. Um, now, uh, in, uh, prior to the May, uh, the city did have to file an uh, MBTA zoning action plan. Uh, we did do that in January. Soon thereafter, the state released uh, what it's called as a compliance model. Now, when we filed the action plan, we did uh, provide a lot of the city's uh, GIS data layers into the state. They incorporated uh, the information from Quincy and all the MBTA communities in creating this compliance model. So uh, a lot of it is, is predetermined by the state uh, modeling. Um, so we had to put in some inputs to get some densities, but a number I think all of us have, have seen is uh, the, the modeling re and the city's density requires uh, a zoning district to create upwards of 11,752 units. So that's the target uh, we're looking for. Uh, when this model first came out, and you can kind of see that one image, looks a lot like Quincy Center. Uh, we were hopeful there might have been a, a side door or two um, because uh, we believe, again, the city is generating uh, the units that the state's looking for. Uh, there is no side door. Uh, this is law. Um, you can't really get, uh, it, it required changes to the law. But uh, we tested uh, Quincy Center under the current Quincy Center zoning districts, which is, is very dense. Uh, and as it stands to today, the district created uh, over 15,000 units. But that's done by special permit. Uh, that's also done um, in large part through the city Quincy Center Urban Renewal Plan. So um, we sort of backed off uh, of looking at that station. We have four stations. Um, I go back to, as Solicitor Timmons mentioned, 2016, the adoption of the North Quincy TOD Zoning District. Uh, we looked at that. Um, the Abbey was built, uh, but there's not a whole lot of room around that station. Uh, then we looked at Wollaston. I think, as this board knows, uh, we did approve the Wollaston Urban Renewal Plan. That is enough of a business village that it, it, it needed more than just zoning. It needed additional tools, uh, so we mimicked that uh, area after our um, successes with Quincy Center. So now we're down into the Quincy Adams Station. And uh, this uh, body, uh, I believe a few years ago, approved a zoning amendment that extended that North Quincy TOD district to a small area off of Center Street to encourage development. So um, we started to take a, a closer look at that area. And uh, I'll come back to the slide. These are the two districts. But I, I slid this side, slide in, and it's, it's an area of South Quincy. I want to point um, you guys, uh, you folks, to the, the lighter green area, sort of right in the center of the map. Uh, that's industrial A zoning, uh, sort of off to the left of Center Street, then it goes up Bergen Parkway and then comes in uh, off of Liberty Street. Um, so we, we, we know that industrial zones prohibit residential housing. Uh, we've seen residential housing um, come into this area. Folks are, are relocating some of those industrial uses um, you know, because it needs a lot of land area because the land values are so high in Quincy. 
Um, we've had, obviously, the, the DECO development has come forward. Um, we've had a, a number of other developments. Elevation is a big one. The big triangle zoning district, uh, that blue area is Industrial B. That's the large majority of Crown Colony. We did not include that in this um, area. We, we don't need it for the density. Uh, so we've stuck right to that lime green area. Um, as we took a closer look at that area, we did recognize a number of existing streets um, that uh, had a lot of low density residential, single family, two family, three family. And we started to talk to Councilor uh, Devine uh, who recognized that same thing. He, he said, you guys, you gotta protect those existing neighborhoods. Um, so we did with the climb, uh, compliance model, we went ahead and we removed a number of streets. Um, Liberty Street, a portion of Topman Street, we took out of the proposed zoning overlay. Uh, we removed the residential portion of Penn Street. We also took out uh, Quincy Street and, and a portion of, of Brook Road. And, um, and once we did that and ran the model, uh, we got numbers, um, unit numbers that were around 10,000. So it was a little short for what the state was looking for. So that's when we gazed back up to North Quincy and you know, started to look at those uh, three office buildings across the tracks from the, the Abbey. Uh, that'd be 100, 150, and 200 Newport Ave extension. And said, you know, with the success of the Abbey, in all likelihood, would probably see some mixed use development right there on the station. Uh, so we went ahead and added that uh, district. And so what we're proposing is two districts uh, combined would generate about 13,985 units according to the state's model. So that's the piece uh, that uh, we assisted uh, the solicitor Timmons with. Uh, he uh, was the lead with creating the uh, council, um, uh, in the zoning amendment, uh, council order 2023-118. Um, now the modeling, and, and we had to uh, do a number of different tests with density requirements. This is uh, where we settled on. Uh, it's 10,000 square foot is the minimum lot size. Lot area per dwelling unit is 325 square feet. Um, that 325 is what's already on the books for the existing North Quincy zoning overlay, uh, which is section 8.5. Um, a couple of examples of uh, existing uh, square feet per dwelling unit. Um, the uh, DECO building is 180 units at 100,000 square feet. That's about a, a 558 square foot per dwelling unit. The Abbey at North Quincy is 610 units on 303,000 square feet. That's a 497 um, uh, square feet per dwelling unit. The uh, permitted but not built 269 Center Street, that's 304 units on 120,000 square feet, that's a 397 per dwelling unit. So that, that's our, our density um, element. And then we have maximum building height of eight stories. And then the by right question. So when we went to uh, the existing TOD zoning overlay, as well as the Quincy Center zoning district, uh, we did away with uh, setbacks uh, with the hope of working with uh, private developers on enhancing sidewalks, widening sidewalks, creating a little bit of more public realm. Um, so having the buy right, we felt that um, that shouldn't be done. We should probably have a minimum uh, setback. So we settled on um, you know, our good practice and good experience uh, as a department uh, supporting the site plan review and went with uh, 10 foot setbacks on, on either side. Um, I would uh, note that um, prior to this meeting, we did meet with the board. Uh, one of the things we've done uh, with these uh, aggressive zoning districts is uh, the board, we, uh, the department will assist the board in adopting design guidelines to help um, further kind of clarify the city's um, vision for these types of redevelopments, um, for the sidewalks and uh, different design elements. And uh, we were able to uh, get the board to support in their report that, you know, they'll be more than happy to move forward and update those uh, existing guidelines we have for the, the DOD zoning and I will have them incorporated for this new uh, zoning district as well. Uh, this is, you know, part of that as of right zoning. You know, site plan review can still occur and we will still plan to follow through on that, um, that commitment uh, with the planning board. The mandatory mixed use development, uh, Solicitor Timmons mentioned this, 
at the beginning, this legislation started as residential only. And that was, I mentioned, we ran the model on, on Quincy Center. We're mixed use in Quincy Center. Late, uh, earlier this fall, the, the, the state did open up and allow some mixed use. Um, they didn't ban it as straight multifamily. I thought that was a, a good take. Um, but this is, as, as Solicitor Timmons mentioned, a, it's a, it's a multifamily um, uh, zoning requirement or, or purpose for the zoning district. Uh, obviously, any energy efficiency, um, yeah, there's some other elements there. Uh, some more important clarifications. Uh, housing be built. It doesn't supersede wetlands. Um, let me see some of the densities. Oh, one of the big questions that's come up, and because there's been a number of workshops over the summer, is you know we have these zoning areas. Does this compel the city to now update roads and, and infrastructure? And this law does not compel that. Um, so that I think is a key uh, element of that. Um, Next steps, uh, Solicitor Timmons, I don't know if you want to get the mic back or... So we're here today, obviously, um, this body uh, manages the, the zoning. Um, planning Board uh, did its public hearing earlier this evening. We'll issue your report in the next couple of days. We're here tonight to uh, obviously add, uh, have some dialogue and some discussions with, with this group uh, on this zoning, and, and we're here to have, uh, answer some questions. Thanks, Rob. Right. Thank you. Uh, and, and just for everyone, FYI, I mean, no vote tonight. Uh, I want to open it up to my colleagues for questions. Um, Monday at um, at the council meeting, we'll have a public hearing. Uh, Jen's got the the schedule that will come out, and um, uh, we'll 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 move on it on on Monday evening. But I want to open it up to anyone who has any questions uh, on anything that Mr. Timmons. Mr. Stevens has thrown out or any questions for anyone who is in the audience that might come up and have a, uh, a good answer for it. So is anybody, uh... no, you're good? Councilor DeBona? Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a comment and um, as you were going through your presentation, I got to thinking a lot about zoning when you started saying zoning been a hot topic in the city rezoning um, the section 3a guidelines I know this is kind of mandated and put on to us to proceed in doing obviously some multi-family zoning and when I look in the downtown and I look in these T stations and MBTAs North Quincy Wallston Quincy Center Quincy Adams downtown here I think of this could be more dense areas to, to build to construct multi-units and all that stuff. However, there is a ups, there's a downside of this. We have a very big cut through city. And just going over the forward bridge and seeing all the folks from Weymouth and Hingham and Situate and Cohasset mm. and all the different Amazon trucks, mm -hmm. FedEx, UPS, let's, let's throw them all in the mix, coming through our city constantly. We do have some streets and peninsulas in the city that creates a lot more traffic. And what do I need to do in relay of all this is, and it, I'm glad we're here, we've got some ward counselors here, is, is to retake a look, and I know Councilor Devine was just spoken about, about, okay, let's, these streets don't look good, let's, let's keep these res A, or we, we need to protect our residential A's, and we need to probably expand some of that res A's in certain areas of the city. And um, this is, you know, not only to you guys, it's also to my fellow ward counselors, is to retake a look at some of the areas throughout the city where we're going to build in certain sections of the city. I encourage that. However, because of the sake of the traffic and the congestion and the cut through city that we have, and we can't, we don't have a lot of control over it, um, we need to really protect a lot of our single family homeowners that are living in the res A's, but maybe switching some of that and rezoning some of those areas into more res a so it's just basically a comment um i know we're, we're dictated with we, we live we live right next to boston i fully understand that but we are definitely a cut through city 
And now with the holidays around, you, you could see when you get in that vehicle and you're out there and you're driving around the city, it takes a little longer at certain times. And then throw weather on top of it. If it rains or if it snows or any type of precipitation, it's slowing down everyone in the city. And these are people that work outside of the city that have to commute. For instance, myself, and I've, you know, some folks that go off to, to Boston, they have to go over the Neponset Bridge, and it's backed up. And we all have to, we all, we all as counselors have responsibility for, for also the, the, uh, the residents that live here. And uh, just coming off an election, I know it was a hot topic in the city about rezoning, rezoning. It kept on coming up, it kept on coming up. Each, each couple doors we were getting to, rezoning. How are we gonna protect the traffic? Um, so I think this stuff is really good, and I'm, I'm encouraging a lot of the nice development um, throughout the city for, for the you know, mixed use and the multi-units and stuff. However, we do have to protect our homeowners, the single families, and some of the construction that's happening in those particular areas needs to be, um, I think we need to take a quick, a, a hard look at it as a body, as, as ward councilors, uh, as an at-large to help and work with the ward councilors. I, I, like the fact that Councilor Devine was very big on, well, these streets, we need to protect these streets. I'm getting, you know, I see him at ZBA, I see him at planning all the time. He's, he's there almost every meeting. Um, and, and he's hearing it in his ear about the residents. And I, I know going into this next phase, we're, this will probably be our last um, committee meeting and we are at the last meeting on Monday, but going into the new year of 2024, I know it's a hot topic that rezoning is gonna definitely be back up here and, and you folks, I'm going to probably be back up here in the council chambers talking about how do we protect our single families, um, our homeowners that have uh, been, been kind of getting at us for the last few years. So it's, it's, it's a good eye opener. To, I love your presentation. Thank you for coming in. And uh, I think we're, we've done a good job in general over the last few years. You know, North Quincy development, um, the thing is coming along really well. Um, the Hospital Hill development, I mean, that really... I mean, that's a beautiful looking, looking building over there. Um, I, I, I've talked to some of the other developers about possibly going over to Penn and maybe taking that orange down and maybe putting a different color up right across from Quincy Adams T. Do you think you could do that, by the way? You think you could maybe make a recommendation to the, to the, the to person who built that building? Say, you know what, can you go out and can you change that color orange into something else? That's, that's my only question I have. Do you, yeah. Is there any alterations that we can do as a body here to fix some of the buildings. Cause that almost looks like it comes out of Miami Vice, like uh, out of down South Beach or something. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you come into the city, it's, everything else looks nice and beautiful. And you come into the Quincy Adams T and you look over on the left and there's that orange, ugly looking 1980 look. Is there any way that we can fix that or we can, we can mitigate that by, by putting a different color up there? Planting some more trees. Um, you know, the facade, there's limits to how much we can mandate on facades. On the, on the color? Uh, on, yeah, on, on the outside of the facades. Uh, is there anything that we can... A lot of what we do is site, you know, so water, sewer, you know, traffic. The is there anything we can do on the outside to kind of mask that, kind of camouflage it maybe yeah. as, we, as we construct? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about oh, MBTA our, is right next door. Is there anything that we can do on their end to say, hey, listen, let's <laughs> do something on their end and... Uh, yeah. But um, thank you for your presentation. I just wanted to piggyback a little bit off, uh, off of the rezoning um, and looking forward into the new year of, of maybe talking with the council up here and having more discussions about it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Councilor Devine. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, this is the second uh, publicly one I've heard, uh, and third within 24 hours when I was in your office the other day, yesterday. Uh, I really appreciate that you guys have accommodated uh, all my requests. Um, I know it seems very scary to a lot of people, but this is, uh, some people, but this is a law that we have to meet. And um, when I was sworn in, I had to, swear that I would obey the, the laws of the Commonwealth. So we need to make sure that we follow the rules and take care of these things properly. But at the same time, uh, your whole department and uh, city solicitor and uh, the city itself have worked very closely with me all summer. And I appreciate that because, uh, is it possible to bring back up the circle there again with the overlay? Yeah, 
so there's a big section in there, a green section in, on our West Quincy zone. That's a whole area between uh, Center, Liberty, and um, I believe Water Street. It, it's, they're all single family homes. Some of them are very old. These people have lived there a long time. We've protected all them. And I also asked to uh, Penn Street's a small street. Um, and there's also a lot of nice single and two family homes there. They're all tucked in, you know, behind BJ's gas. And uh, then on Totman Street, there's about seven houses. On Liberty, it extends across Center Street, and there's about 20 plus houses there. Uh, you guys carved all those out and uh, to make sure that they're protected, that they're not in that zone. Uh, I believe it must have been very hard, and uh, but that's one of the things I was asking for. I, I heard you mention it earlier, so I appreciate that, and uh, I I think our constituents will too. Um, so going forward, this is something that uh, not. I don't. I know it's. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going to change, but at the same time, a lot of uh, these setbacks and these rules are very similar to ones that we already have existing. Also, so uh, you've done a really good job of making sure that we still have uh, some type of ability to control what's going to happen. Uh, like you said, not, we're not a wild west thing here. So, uh, to your presentation, I think was very clear, but I want to make sure people know too that uh, we're watching out for them. And uh, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Andronico. Thank you. Appreciate the presentation. Uh, I had mentioned this in uh, our meeting back in May, and I feel like it bears repeating again. Just with the requirements that we're giving, it bothers me that the state is requiring us to build uh, you know, over 10,000 units of housing. But as part of that, we can't make mixed use by right a part of it. You know, the whole goal from the state's perspective is build more housing, get folks to use transit more, decrease on, you know, car and vehicle traffic throughout a city, you know, throughout the state, really. Uh, but we need to build all that housing, but then we can't require that these people have a third place to go, you know, to get a bite to eat or just do something after work um, or on their weekends. So the whole purpose was to cut down on traffic, but now we'll have to build, not have to, we have to have capacity to build, you know, upwards of 10,000 uh, units, but then not have somewhere else for them to go. So they'll have to go across the city or go somewhere else and just add to more traffic in the first place. Um, so I would like to see the council moving forward to push ahead with asking the state to maybe even allow a percentage of this overlay district to be uh, mixed use by right, even if it's just like 10% or 25% of those units to be mixed use um, would be great. Uh, but again, it's a state requirement, state law, and if we don't comply again by the end of the year, then we miss out on being able to apply for MassWorks grants, Housing Choice Grant Program, or you know, local capital project funds. So it is something that we have to do, um, and I think that the, the planning department did the best they could with the proposal before us, and I do want to give a shout-out again to Councilman Devine uh, for his partnership with them on, uh, with you guys on figuring that out. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Councilor Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I, you know, thank you again for all your work. I don't have much more to say than I already have. I think this is crazy uh, still that we're being forced to, you know, put this in places where other cities have not fulfilled their obligations from the get-go. Um, but I also, you know, just hearing my colleagues' comments, you know, I don't want to lead people to believe that uh, when we do, at a certain point in time, look at future uh, rezoning for the city that, you know, we're not going back in time. <laughs> so we're not going to a place where residence A will be more stock, you know, in the city. It doesn't seem like people are building that stock, especially in places like Quincy. Uh, so I just don't want people to think that that's what's going to happen. The neighborhoods will be protected as best they can, but we probably won't be heading in that direction. So thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilor Harris. Um, I just want to mention that the fact that my concern, uh, one of my concerns is obviously, and we have things in, that we've put in place, this, this council has, as far as the short-term rental um, situation. So obviously, uh, I'd like to see more involvement um, and uh, education with our inspectional services folks to be involved 
because uh, uh, if this moves forward, um, we're going to be right on top of the game instead of being behind the game, which it seems sometimes we are, um, which is natural for a, a, a major city. Um, again, uh, one, of, one of the things that uh, one of my major problems, um, I have, uh, uh, you know, I, we, I've already gone through the North Quincy project, um, but um, the other areas of my ward, we're dealing with, um, you know, when we talk about changing zoning and uh, res A is, is, should be protected. Uh, people have, have worked their whole lifetime to live and want to stay where they are and live in a, in a, in a, a situation where they're not, uh, you know, subject to abuse, uh, disruption, unnecessary disruption, abusive disruption. So, and I've, and, and uh, I know the um, inspectional services has worked um, pretty good with me on, on that across, and, uh, and across the whole city. Uh, city. But uh, our residents say uh, they're, they're the folks that are taking the brunt of our taxes, and especially in my ward, as was pointed out three times at the last uh, council meeting, which was uh, I've heard very much about. So. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that, but we have to protect our folks in resident A, plain and simple as that. That's, that's my stance. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, Rob. Um, I see that on, on page two, uh, 161 acres. Yes. Was that a, that's a number we got to somehow with the formulas to end yeah, up in? So the, the model of both districts combined is 160 acres. And when I was doing a little homework on my own, I, I, it looked like they had uh, had proposed that each municipality had one, would have one district. Did we, is that something that I, I had misread? You know, that each Perhaps. one- Perhaps, there's, there's multiple districts, but it could be- But we could take the 161 and have- Well, we got four stations, right. so that's, you know, by its own nature, we could have four districts, potentially. I think Newton proposed like eight districts, um, the city of Newton. Uh, Braintree's got two districts, one covering the uh, commuter rail station uh, in the landing, and then they also have their subway station at the red line. So that was Braintree's proposal. So multiple districts is, was uh, accounted for. Right, and, uh, and I know, you know we have a great relationship with the solicitor's office and with the the planning department. So you know, this is as we as we as Jim Timmons said mentioned earlier. You know, it's not a mandate. It's a it's another layer um, of zoning or planning uh, for the Quincy City for the city of Quincy to swallow and uh, and work it into their um, their protocol. And I know that you know down the road as we go along. Um, the planning between the planning department and the ward counselor, you know, I know there'll be a, a uh, cause it seems like it's all planning and then, you know, planning gets it. We, 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 we don't go into our usual zoning cause it's by right. And then planning would touch base with the ward counselor. In this case, say it would be counselor divine over in West Quincy and, and there'll be a process, you know? Um, and I know it, I'm way early on that you know, on, on that. But I know that that would probably be, uh, be something to make sure that that ward council is way out in front of something that shows up I, I in would your lap. I would expect that to continue um, because the planning board will still be asked to do site plan review, the technical review of these applications. And I think all the ward councilors uh, that have been with us on projects know there's, there's a lot up front um, that we, we count on that relationship with the ward councilors to get some of that neighborhood feedback so we can try to, you know, articulate the city's concerns during the site plan review process. Um, the trouble with site plan review is you can't say no at the end of the day if that project meets all of your uh, guidelines or all of the uh, density requirements. Right. Uh, and, whereas and, and, a special permit, even at the end of the day, there, there, there still could be a no vote um, on a special permit application. Right, and I think it's just the, when folks saw the, 
I know that I've spoken to a few uh, folks who had said, you know, asked me about this particular um, ordinance tonight. And, and the, the, the way, you know, it's, and it's the way it's written with Mass General Laws, it, it's, it's, it, it jumps out at you like all of a sudden the bulldozer is going to hit in West Quincy and things are going to start. And as Jim had mentioned earlier on, it's not a mandate. It's just another layer, another um, application to put into the mix on, on, on our planning and zoning. And um, I just want to make that clear to everyone that, you know, it, it'll still be, there'll still be a, a, a very formal process all the way from planning all the way down, um, which, which I know would happen. But um, just want to throw that out again because a lot of people read that and all of a sudden said, Gee, they're going into those areas and they're going to do a number on the areas and they're going to put multifamilies in there and there'll be controls and, and we know that. We know that up here, but a lot of folks sometimes um, they read into it and uh, and it gets them going down the wrong path. Yeah, and, and I, I did maybe hear a fear that the state is building the housing. That is not the case at all. This is a, a regulatory thing. Um, what gets developed will be up to the private landowners in these areas, right. as it as it is today. Right. You know, Thank so they, this this is just it's a regulatory. I I've just heard is the state going to come in and force housing? Yeah, I, there's nothing to that. Right. This is simply a, a, a local regulation. In fact, uh, the state actually owns zoning um, under Mass General Law 40A, and there's limitations to what all of the municipalities, including Quincy can do with its zoning. It, it still owns, you know, the state still controls it. And that's why there's, you know, this is law and, and we're, you know, trying to make that effort to comply. Right, thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Good on questions. Uh, this is gonna stay in committee. Uh, as I said, on Monday night, we'll have a public hearing and we'll deal with it Monday night at the city council. I wanna thank you and, and Mr. Timmons, Mr. Fatsis, the whole team. Uh, yeah, uh, it was, it was, it's very clear on on what we have here. Uh, it just will be tweaked as we go along uh, down the road with it, of course. So mm -hmm. thanks, Rob. Great, and so, uh, I'll just leave you with that one thing under the planning department realm on the website. Uh, we do have a category where we're putting up a lot of our maps, uh, this presentation. Folks in the community wanna take a closer look. Uh, they can find it there under the planning department under our planning board case um, list. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> with that, I'll move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, 2023-119. Uh, it's the LDA. Uh, I don't know who's coming up first. It looks like Mr. Fassi's. Well, thank you uh, for your time this evening, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, counselors. Uh, not only thank you for your time, but thank you for your partnership in the downtown redevelopment process, over 15 years of progress. It is with great pleasure that the team is here tonight to present you the next step in this progress. The land disposition agreement for a parcel of land that includes a portion of the area formerly known as the Ross parking garage site south of what is now called the General's area. This agreement is the second step in what is a three-step process for this body. The first was land assemblage the final piece of land assemblage of which was approved by the council last month was the eminent domain taking of 119 parking way or what we call it the IHOP. As previous LDAs, as like previous LDAs, it's a real estate agreement. It sets a framework for a private development. It doesn't close until a number of conditions are met. This allows the process to move forward to the third step, which is a full and thorough review process via the planning board, and importantly for this body, leads to the future financial appropriation request 
necessary to meet the public infrastructure requirements, including parking, to make the project a reality. The team expects those plans to be brought before the council in early 2024. In short, this is not the council's only bite at the apple, uh, but tonight we're talking about land. I'm gonna briefly walk through the key elements of the agreement and then DJ McKinnon of Atlantic Development, the selected master developer for the private portion of this plan, will outline the preliminary scope of the project as it exists today. I'll just note again that the LDA sets the framework with detail on the specific portions of the project to come later via the appropriation request that I mentioned and the certificate of consistency process under our urban renewal plan, which the planning board participates greatly with. With us tonight, we also have our legal team to answer any questions you may have on the details of this agreement, which I will say is almost identical in substance to the previously approved LDAs. You have a copy of the appraisal that was the basis of the purchase price included in the LDA, and Joe Shea of Granite City Partners is here to answer any questions you may have on the engineering, the easements, utilities, or other land matters which are discussed in the appraisal. First, I'll describe the actual parcel subject to disposition, which you will remember from the December 4th meeting, the city assembled all of our land and rights of way. And this LDA creates the portion of land where the private redevelopment will consist of ground floor retail and residential above. Mr. McKinnon will provide detail on the redevelopment. The key piece of any real estate transaction is of course the price. And according to the appraisal, the purchase price is proposed at $7.3 million. Some of the other key elements of the LDA include the following. And I just want to note that it, all of this has to be done uh, before we can actually close on it. The requirement that any proposed project meets the city's urban renewal standards via the COC process. A mixed use private development including, including housing and 20,000 square feet of retail, which creates a flagship corner and block as part of our redevelopment. Requires evidence that the developer has the financial resources to proceed with the project. Of course, the 7.3 million purchase price. An outside closing date of 2026. And then the city construction of a parking facility and future parking lease for a preset number of spaces, uh, similar to the Kilroy Square projects, including surface level parking for the major retail component, spaces that parking, uh, excuse me, shopping carts can be easily wheeled to. Now that's the nuts and bolts of this agreement and the land. So I'd like to now hand it over to the designated developer, DJ McKinnon, to provide preliminary details of the proposed redevelopment. And we will be here to answer questions after Mr. McKinnon's presentation to you. Mr. McKinnon. Great. Thank you, Mr. Planning Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. I'm DJ McKinnon from Atlantic Development. Uh, pleased to be here tonight. Um, you know, we find this uh, proposal, this site, uh, from our standpoint, to be uh, a great location in the city. But also, we want to first recognize all the hard work that's taken place before us. Uh, you know. Uh, as Mr. Fatsy's mentioned, the city's been working on the downtown for over 15 years now, uh, gone through extensive planning. Um, you've appropriated significant funding for infrastructure, for other activities to prepare these areas for development. 
Uh, you've gone ahead and installed a significant amount of infrastructure. Uh, you put zoning in place to allow for these developments. Uh, and you also put special legislation in place to allow for these transactions. So that's all a precursor to what we do, which is then we come to develop. But I really, I, I feel like we're the, kind of the tail end of it in this one with all the hard work you've done. So thank you for uh, creating this template. Um, and you know now we're at the point where we can advance our proposal, which we feel meets many of the city needs. Uh, we're proposing a mixed-use development with specialty grocery uh, at ground level, along with other uh, retail housing component uh, and the city parking garage. In addition to that, um, obviously now is the opportunity for the city for us to pay you know significant real estate taxes and provide that revenue to the city. Um, as the director mentioned, we are using a uh, template that's been used before. Uh, this one is actually pretty similar to the O'Connell development in that they built a residential building with some commercial space at ground level. They also built the Kilroy garage. Uh, in their case, they were uh, you know, ahead of a lot of the other downtown development, were pioneering, and there was uh, a special tax deal. In our case, there's, there is no tax deal. We pay full taxes uh, as soon as the development uh, uh, is in place. So with that, we can walk through the plans. Uh, if, why don't we, okay, yeah, the one we just had, we'll just back this up. So this is just another picture uh, of the aerial. It shows the existing area with the IHOP building. You can see the roof there, uh, the parking uh, lot below it. That smaller parking lot on the right is where the, uh, is where the ice skating rink is right now. So now moving on. Uh, <clears throat> this plan reflects one change to the infrastructure that's underway, which is the traffic signal, uh, which is at the end of Parking Way, is, being, is now shown shifted down to McConville. That's work that the city has underway, so we wanted to make sure we showed that on the plan. And then with this plan, we have McConville on the bottom, and uh, the larger bo retail box that you see there is a specialty grocery store with two smaller boxes to the left, those are for the uh, restaurant, proposed restaurant and bank. Uh, to access the site, we come in off of McConville with the main entrance drive to go both in and out. As you come into the site, you'll have ground level parking that will work for the, for the retail space. So as you drive in, you've got parking. That side of the site will facilitate use of shopping carriages and those type of things that we need for the, for the uh, specialty grocer. Um, we also have a designated area for loading that is safe and out of the way. Um, you'll also use that entrance if you're going up to the uh, city parking garage. On this plan, the city parking garage is shown in, in red. It's those structural elements that come down to ground level. Um, you'd be able to drive up the ramp and then traverse throughout the garage for approximately 800 parking spaces uh, that will be available in the garage. The garage will have its pedestrian entrance off of uh, the uh, General Dunford Drive side. It's that appendage on the right side of the plan, which would provide for you know, elevators, stairways, and so forth, so people could come down from the garage and be right on General Dunford Bridge to walk uh, in and out of the city. Um, in addition to that, we also have a uh, residential entrance, um, which is right on the corner of General Dunford Drive in McConville, just opposite the uh, fountain that would allow for the residential entrance and then from there go up. Uh, above this level is six additional stories of, uh, of residential housing for the approximately 300 apartments. Why don't we move on to the next plan. Uh, this is probably a little bit easier way to understand the development. Uh, if you were standing in the parking lot of the uh, Beth Israel Urgent Care and looking across what is today a parking lot, at ground level, we would have, we're showing the traffic signal which uh, is being relocated. Uh, and then at ground level, we have the commercial space. Try to make that more prominent with a little bit different look. Have that stand out for the, you know, we'll likely have the corner restaurant bank. And then our specialty grocer um, is, has an entrance for pedestrians along McConville, uh, just a little bit further down. Um, this is now ground floor of the building again with the specialty grocer loading. This is starting to show where the stairways, elevators, things like that are located. Uh, and then the parking area uh, for people at ground level. Next would be the podium level, kind of the first level of residential. 
uh, an ample amount of amenities. Uh, we have open areas for courtyards. Um, the large white box that you see on the top is the parking garage itself. And as you can see, we have two sides of the parking garage. We have it, we're abutting it with the, with the residential structure. And then those floors continue up, uh, third through seventh floor, uh, kind of a similar pattern with the open courtyards. And then we get to the very top, uh, we're proposing a roof deck on top of the garage that would be available for the residential um, as well. And then moving on to the next plan, this is just uh, a portion of the garage plan. It shows that uh, lower right-hand section of that plan is actually the ramp that brings you up into the garage. And then as you go up, you turn 90 degrees, and uh, then you start to go up the garage itself, which has a slope. The slope on the garage to go to the, to the different levels occurs along the MBTA tracks. If we jump to the next one, Joe, and then this is a typical floor plate of the garage. Um, so we have a little over 100 spaces per floor, and that continues up for, uh, for eight levels. Uh, this is a bit of a uh, cross-section showing the garage from the T-track side uh, where you can see the slope take place. The next, uh, there's a rendering that would be from kind of the fountain area on McConville looking back. Um, what we're showing here is the frontage for the specialty grocer along, uh, McCon along McConville on the left. Uh, we then have the uh, entrance to drive uh, into the building uh, where that white van is located. Just to the immediate left of that uh, is a section of the building that shields uh, some of the back of the house, the loading, generators, things like that. Um, but then we show the residential above. And now we're back to the original rendering that we had uh, from the start. That's kind of the over overview of the development. Uh, happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Thanks, CJ. Questions, colleagues, any questions on Council DeBona? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. DJ, good to see you tonight. Um, thank you for coming in for a presentation. Um, good to see Bill Gary in the, in the audience. Um, I was thinking back when I first got elected in 2015 and 2016, West of Chestnut was just being built, and um, LBC hasn't come to the table yet, O'Connell hasn't come to the table yet, and now you have developments of uh, one Chestnut Place, Nova Suites. Mm -hmm. It kind of blends in. We had a nice new parking garage with shared parking that works for the restaurants and the business owners in the downtown on that side. And then the Galvins did their part with the nice condominiums that are right in this area, right across the street from this particular site. And uh, we, we had the Ross Garage. We took that down. It's the Ross Lot. And then we made the General's Bridge. We made all the infrastructure improvements. I know you spoke about having the proper zoning in place, having an infrastructure, a proactive, pro proactive approach, and then the legislation, special legislation in place um, that you're gonna pay taxes and you're gonna put something nice in. Um, it's good to, to work with somebody that we've worked with in the past. I know when we talked about the North Quincy site, I talked about possibly getting a target and you went out and you found us a target. <laughs> um, we talked offline about how you can just pull up and order some stuff online. They'll come out, put your groceries slash merchandise inside your vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, the vision is there. Um, we can see it now, we can touch it, we can feel it. It's tangible over here on the one side of the, of the downtown. And now the Ross lot, the General Bridge area is now the next segment. And uh, it's good to see you guys in here before the new year. And we could hopefully move this forward um, in the next phase of, of redeveloping this, this side of the Ross lot side, doing a proper parking garage um, and allowing uh, obviously Fox Rock to come to the table on their end on the other side of the bridge, the General's Bridge, I, that mean. Um, but it's all little pieces of the puzzle and um, we're doing it parcel by parcel and um, it's good to see a nice looking development in front of me that should, will possibly be built. And um, I believe in what you believe in for yourself. So hopefully this will be the exact measurements and everything. Um, if this was to move forward, what do you look at for a possible build out timeframe? 
how how long is this going to? I mean, this is LDA, but how long is this going to take this process? Ideally, ideally, we'd like to get started uh, before next summer on physical construction. So um, we're we've met with a preliminary meeting with the planning board. Uh, so far, we're preparing plans to file uh, with the planning board right after the first of the year, and uh, have been working, you know, very diligently on all our due diligence, all our other items that have to come forward. So our plan would be to start, um, you know, hopefully before next summer with physical construction. Uh, we'd like to have the specialty grocer open within kind of a 12 to 18 month period after that. Uh, and then residential would open, you know, kind of in phases following that. So move it right along. The parking garage. Um I know this, this is the LDA for this particular parcel side. Are you, do you have an idea of how many parking spots will be in this parking garage, what you talked about? Yes, uh, approximately 800. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's going to be other development. Do you think that will be enough on the Ross side? Is that a question for anybody else, that this parking garage of 800, un, uh, 800 parking spaces will be enough for that particular section? I would say on the Ross side. Let me uh, Can I, defer if, to yeah, Mr. Mr. Walker for a sec. Thank you. Thank you. Through you to Mr. Walker. Th through you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Councillor. Um, the full parking plan and the needs and the build out of what we expect the full need on the Ross side will be part of that February, January, early 2024 package okay. that is the next step in okay. this process. Um, we're not there yet. We're still being. Uh, very cognizant of what may come, what is on the table, and um, going through those plans right now and figuring out exactly the full uh, parking need over there. But we fully expect um, the parking to be laid out in very clear detail, obviously, because we have to fund it um, in the first quarter of 2024. Okay, that's fair enough. I know we're, we're here on this LDA in this particular site on this, but it also, as a proactive approach, is to look at what we're going to possibly be for infrastructure for parking garage purposes. So that looks like a good number. What is the existing parking garage and how many um, spaces do we have in the existing one um, right by the Nova Suites? What do we 715. have? 715. 715? So we're, we, it'll be a little bit more and bigger than the existing one. And it will possibly be shared parking. Is that correct? Like this one we have. All those details. I mean, we're happy to get into that, Council. Yep. Um, you know, again, we're, we're here for the setting the framework of the real estate. Um, those details on how the parking works out. But yeah, I mean, obviously it'll be shared parking. Okay. Um, right. And there will be a public component to, to everything that we do. But those details, that's that's exactly what um, the mines and the planning department and the consultant groups and our full downtown team, that's what they're working through right now. This LDA gets in place. It's a put it in motion for the garage. Is that is that hand in hand? Correct. It, 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 quite frankly, it gives the proponent uh, the ability to move forward with the specialty grocer. With a, in, a, in some concrete way, um, and it gives us the ability to now that we have the site laid out specifically, um, the agreements in place for us to get the rest of the work done in a certain amount of time frame. It, it creates the framework for the much larger component of this, which is obviously going to be the, the appropriation request through the DIF, through state and federal sources, whatever is developed, um, that actually finances the, the public end of the project. But for our purposes here tonight, it, it, it gives the proponent uh, the ability to move forward with what uh, he and, and his firm need to do, and it gives the planning department and our folks the ability to know exactly what's laid out in front of us and the ability to move forward and, and be back before this body uh, within a couple months. Okay, and last question I'll ask, Mr. Walker. Um, I know this site's going to be where kind of the existing ice skating rink, which is there right now. Um, can we find, uh, if we possibly can find another spot for that? It's very, very popular here in the city. It's brought a lot of folks out. We, we use it quite a bit, a um, couple, you, couple Chairman, nights a week. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman, the mayor's already thinking about it. So, yeah, we know that this site uh, is probably not going to be, it's not going to be long term, I, probably not even next year. So we need to find uh, another site for that. But uh, the mayor's committed to bringing it back next year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you, Councillor. Any other, uh, go to uh, Councilor Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, thank you for the presentation. Um, this is a cool project, 325 units, uh, 20,000 square feet of gross retail. Um, 
I'm curious about the garage too. So what's your anticipation for needs for commitment from the city for uh, parking spaces with those 325 units? Uh, we'll need, based on our experience at the Abbey, which we've been tracking that pretty close, we'll be right around 300 spaces. Okay. And that what, leaves a surplus of about 500. Okay. What's the, um, to, through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Walker, what's the committed number of spaces to the apartments uh, in around downtown for the municipal garage in Kilroy Square? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just doing the math off the top of my head. If the <clears throat> folks from planning have that off the top of their head, feel free to jump in. But I would say of the 700, um, two, two fifty to two fifty ish in, in Kilroy are dedicated to the two out of the seven thirty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, do we have uh, do we have utilization numbers? We sure do. Yeah, we can we can provide those. I'd love to see that. Yeah. And what? Uh, just because I I understand the, the pertinence of this proposal tonight and what it's necessary for for purposes of securing this specialty. Uh, grocer, but what are uh, garages going for these days? <laughs> <laughs> Based on past experience, um, you know, the, the hard construction of the last garage that we did, which is going to be, um, you know, this one might be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, that was $46 million. So, you know, you're, you're talking a substantial uh, public investment. Yep, that's fine. Um, just want to understand what we're, what we're, I mean, I understand the need and this was always part of the plan. Uh, anyway, just want to understand what we're signed up for, but, um, no, this is a cool project that activates a particular area that's been, been dormant for a while, uh, especially with, with residential. Um, so, um, look forward to seeing it come out of the ground. I think I saw a closing date here somewhere around 2025, but you said, uh, construction might start next summer. We'll look. Next Look year is 2024, well right? Yeah. Well before that, if we get Okay. It. All right. That sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor. Chair recognizes Councilor Devine. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Great job. Um, I see you, uh, you have about 22,000 square feet of courtyard in the project. The two rooftops and then the, uh, the on top of the garage. I'll... I'll I'll accept accurate? your math on that because I don't know the number off the top. Yeah, it but it's like pretty, they're pretty big. They're nice. I mean, for your for the apartments that are going to be in there. On the rendition, I see that there's um, trees. Uh, are those going to be most likely plotted trees, or is there going to be actually grass and stuff up there? Just because there's a lot of area, and uh, we as a city, we we do an amazing job with trees. We you know we spend a lot of money putting trees in, and you know we'll I'm sure we're going to be the ones putting them in on the sidewalks. But uh, I was just really curious as to what, if there was a, a master plan on what you're going to have for green space on those courtyards. Yeah, so, so right now we're showing it in concept level, but we've, we have good experience in building those courtyards. I know uh, up at the Abbey with our courtyards, we actually do have some pretty large trees um, as well as we have some you know, areas with yeah. different types of landscaping, some grass. We, we would expect it on that courtyard as well to have an area for uh, a, a dog park. Oh, dogs, nice. Dogs are very yeah. popular uh, in this yeah. development, so we like to make sure we have accommodations on site, minimize their activity off site. So we yeah. expect we have all those elements. It would be nice to see that, you know, when the renditions are done, you know, a lot of times they change. And uh, so just I'd love to see trees and whatever type of green space you can that you want to put in, but it, I'd like it. You know, it's a, it's a, we're a city and, you know, we put trees in that reduce carbon and, Mm -hmm. and temperature and things like that. So anything you guys can do there would be great. Yeah. But it's an awesome project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. We're all set over here. DJ, just a couple of comments. Um, it's great first, Atlantic Realty. I, you, you know, you folks have been right in the middle of everything here um, over the past uh, five or six years here now. We've turned a corner up at North Quincy. We've definitely turned the corner, more than the corner downtown. And, and this is just another piece we all knew that was coming this way. And it's, it's great that um, there's a grocer involved and uh, great that uh, you folks are, uh, you know, involved all the time uh, at 200% effort. Uh, it just will, uh, as we move forward with a few other things in the downtown, it'll uh, really, uh, really finish things off in the next few years. So appreciate it. Uh, 
I don't think we have any other questions. We're going to leave this right in uh, committee until Monday night. We'll pull it out Monday night and um, uh, deal with it then. But um, with that, I, I think we're, uh, we're all set here. So I'll close the ordinance uh, committee meeting at uh, 8, uh, 8.17. Thank you.